Hello everybody, Shrouded Hand here. Disney theme parks are the kind of places where it seems like nothing could ever go wrong. According to the adverts, it's a cartoon world come to life filled with magic and happiness. But if you scratch the surface just a little bit, you'll see that injury and death haunts the streets and buildings of these brightly coloured wonderlands. The amount of deaths that have happened at Disney theme parks are too numerous to list here. With so many millions of people visiting each year, it's inevitable that something bad is going to happen somewhere along the way. There are certain tragic events that leave an indelible mark on the parks. Maybe it's a particular safety barrier or a warning sign that serves as a permanent reminder of some past horror. Or perhaps it's just a certain innocent looking patch of grounds that lingers in the minds of some of the cast members that still remember the terrible events that occurred there. One of the most well known happened in Disneyland Resort in California on the Matterhorn coaster. In 1984, a woman named Dolly Young was riding the coaster. She was sitting alone in the back seat and there was a child in the seat in front of her. The coaster has two separate tracks which run through an artificial mountain intertwining around one another. At one point the coaster track dips down suddenly whilst the second track passes overhead. At this point something happens to cause Dolly to be thrown upwards out of her seat just as the coaster entered the drop. Her head collided with the overhead rails and she was thrown onto the second track. Moments later, another coaster car came along and hit her body, crushing her beneath its wheels. The resulting carnage was extremely gruesome. She was so mangled that they had to deconstruct part of the track to remove her body. Most reports say that she was decapitated in the incident, although one eyewitness claims that her head remained intact but it was forced down inside her torso. Needless to say, she was pronounced dead at the scene. Her seatbelt was found to be unfastened. It's speculated that she undid her belt to try and help the kid in front of her for some reason, but whether this is actually the case or whether it was some sort of malfunction in the fastening system, it's still unclear to this day. 20 years before this incident, there was a very similar death on the Matterhorn. In 1964, a 15 year old boy undid his belt and attempted to stand up whilst riding the coaster. He was thrown from the car and suffered severe internal injuries and died in hospital three days later. With these events in mind it's no wonder that the Matterhorn has a reputation for being haunted. The place where Dolly lost her life is known to staff members as Dolly's Drop or Dolly's Dip. Every day after the ride closes, two staff members have to walk the entire track to collect any dropped belongings. Many staff report an eerie cold feeling at Dolly's drop. They say that the lights in a tunnel just before the drop will burn out quickly, causing the area to always be in darkness. They also hear ominous wailing noises coming from the caverns inside the ride. Whether or not there's any truth to these stories, I don't know. But it's clear that these gruesome events have left their mark on the psyches of the staff. Another gory death with a ghost story attached happened in 1966. A 19 year old boy named Thomas Guy was attempting to enter the park without a ticket. He scaled the 16 foot outer fence and climbed onto the monorail track. Security guards spotted him and attempted to shout a warning but it was too late. A monorail car hit Thomas and dragged him about 30 to 40 feet along the track. His mangled corpse was entirely unrecognisable. The cleanup crew reported having to hose his body off the underside of the track. To this day there's rumours that the monorail drivers will sometimes see the fleeting image of a young man running along the track as they pass the spot where Thomas died. One minute he's there, the next minute he vanishes into thin air. Whether or not you believe in these ghosts, the stories are interesting because they show how these grisly accidents can imprint themselves in people's memories. 
If any place is going to be haunted though, it's got to be the Disneyland Hotel. Since its construction, four people have taken their own lives by jumping from a balcony to the parking lot below. For some reason, the 14th floor seems to be the most popular spot. According to reports, three of the four people chose this floor to jump from, which has led to some people speculating that the 14th floor of the hotel is cursed. I have however found some inconsistencies with this story. The hotel consists of three towers ranging from 12 to 15 stories high. One report is listed on Wikipedia as a man jumping from the 14th floor, but the news reports of this story say that he jumped from the Frontier Tower, which according to my research only has 13 floors. Perhaps it's something strange in the way the floors are numbered, but as far as I know the hotel does label the 13th floor correctly, instead of skipping the number like some hotels do because people are apparently suspicious of the number 13. But I've never been to Disneyland so I couldn't tell you for sure, perhaps some Disneyland enthusiasts could shed some light on the curse of the 14th floor in the comments below. Either way, the idea of someone driven to end their own life in the middle of a Disney resort is a particularly tragic image. On to Disneyland Paris now, which has much fewer incidents but still some notable ones. The Phantom Manor ride is Paris's version of the Haunted Mansion ride in the American parks. The track layout is very similar, but for the Paris version they decided to give it a much darker tone. Taking inspiration from Gothic Horror, The Phantom of the Opera and The House from Psycho, the ride has a decrepit and gloomy look to it. Apparently one of Disney's most prominent animators, Mark Davis, stated that Walt Disney would never have approved of such a darkly themed ride. And to make it even more sinister, there are rumours that the ride might have a real ghost haunting alongside the animatronic phantoms. On the morning of April 2nd, 2016, workers were checking the track before opening, when they discovered the lifeless body of a man slumped across the scenery. This man was a 45 year old technician who had been electrocuted whilst trying to repair a faulty light fixture. It's not known how long his body was actually lying there before it was discovered, probably no more than a few hours, but of course this has led to many stories about how a dead body was mistaken for a prop and was lying there for weeks before it was discovered. This is most likely untrue. The story is very similar to an old case that really did happen, although not in a Disney park. The mummified remains of an outlaw named Elmer McCurdy ended up being used as a prop in a funhouse on Long Beach, California for years before it was discovered to be a real body. And this story is probably combined with the death of the electrician in Phantom Manor to create its own sort of urban legend. The most gruesome death in Disneyland Paris happened in 2010 on the It's a Small World ride. It was after they'd closed for the day. One worker switched on the ride to send the boats along to the station. Unbeknownst to them, another worker was cleaning the ride and was directly in front of one of the boats when it started moving. The cleaner was dragged under the water and jammed between the boat and the track. Although horribly injured, they initially survived and were airlifted to hospital, but they died a few days later. Disney World in Florida has the most reported deaths, way too many to list individually. There has been a few quite grisly deaths though. One of the earliest was in 1977, when a four year old boy fell into the moat surrounding Cinderella's castle and drowned. At the time the barrier surrounding the moat was only about two and a half feet tall, making it easy for the child to climb over. Although most of the blame fell on the mother for not watching her child, Disney were found to be partly responsible and had to pay two million dollars in damages. In 2016, a two year old boy named Lane Thomas was paddling in the shallow waters of Seven Seas Lagoon. He was gathering sand in a bucket to make a sandcastle. At that moment, an alligator jumped out the water and clamped its jaws around the little boy's head. Lane's father rushed over and desperately tried to pull the alligator's jaws open to free his son, but the creature was way too strong. It quickly dragged the boy into the water and disappeared under the surface. 
His corpse was found the next day, floating in shallow waters. Today, a lighthouse-shaped memorial can be seen near the place where Lane lost his life. Park management have installed warning signs and barriers along the perimeter of the lagoon to prevent people going too close to the water's edge. And this isn't even the first time an alligator has attacked a child in the park. In 1986, an 8-year-old boy was attacked by an alligator while standing near to the edge of the Camp Wilderness Lake. Luckily, in this incident, he managed to escape, but not without sustaining serious leg injuries. Surgeons even had to extract an alligator's tooth, which was embedded in his thigh, millimetres away from piercing a major artery. There's actually been a few other unusual animal attacks in the park. It's led to a rumour that somehow the park causes animals to act strangely and aggressively. In 2019, a woman was hospitalised with traumatic brain injury after she was dive-bombed by a nesting bird. And in 1992, a staff member in the Top of the World restaurant was attacked by a swarm of wasps. In the ensuing panic, he fell over the balcony and plummeted 15 floors to his death. And other cast members have died in equally horrible ways. On February 11th, 2004, the Share a Dream Come True parade was just about to begin. Backstage stood a man named Javier Cruz, dressed as Pluto. He was just getting ready to emerge from the backstage gate into public view. Behind him passed the parade floats. Javier had been working at the park for eight years. He started out as a custodian and worked his way up to starring in the Lion King show and then playing Eeyore and finally Pluto. Sadly, Pluto was to be his final role as he accidentally tripped and fell backwards just as the Beauty and the Beast float was passing by and he was crushed to death beneath its wheels. Perhaps this is the origin of the tan-coloured ghostly figure that people report seeing walking down the road in front of Cinderella's castle directly along the route of the parade. Another staff member was killed in 1999. A custodian named Raymond Barlow was cleaning the Fantasyland Skyway station when, similar to the Paris Small World incident, a worker started the ride not realising that Barlow was there. He was directly in the path of the Skyway vehicle, and so in order to avoid being knocked off the platform, he grabbed hold of a seat and attempted to climb up. Unfortunately, he lost his grip and fell 40 feet, landing in a flower bed near the Dumbo ride. He was rushed to hospital, but pronounced dead on arrival. His death is often cited as evidence that there's an unofficial company policy within the park that nobody dies at Disneyland. Although he died immediately upon impact with the ground, he was only pronounced dead at the hospital because of this policy. Rumours are that if a person dies in a Disney park, they are officially considered to be alive until the body has left the borders of the property. And so the real number of deaths that happen within the park is greatly understated. Numerous staff members have reported hearing the nobody dies at Disney phrase, but whether this is just a morbid joke among staff, or if it really is an unofficial policy, is pretty hard to prove. In a lot of accidents, and not just those that happen in Disney parks, a person might not officially be declared dead until they've arrived at hospital and the doctor can examine the body. This is probably what happened in the case of Raymond Barlow. So all the urban legends and ghost stories that I've talked about so far can at least be linked to some kind of real life event. There are others that are slightly more dubious in origin, even so they're pretty creepy and interesting enough to explore. Although the Phantom Manor ride in Paris was host to a genuine dead body, there are other ghost stories about the haunted mansion rides in both California and Florida as well. In the Californian haunted mansion, towards the end of the ride, guests have reported seeing a small lost boy crying for his mother. When they call over to him to try and help, he disappears right before their eyes. 
the story surrounding this ghost is that at some point in time a woman scattered her son's ashes in the park near to the ride and now his ghost flits between the haunted mansion and the nearby Pirates of the Caribbean ride in search of his lost mother. Apparently Disney has a strict policy where they refuse to let anyone scatter ashes inside the park but this doesn't stop some people going ahead anyway. According to this Metro article a custodian working at the park is reported to have said the haunted mansion probably has so much human ashes in it that it's not even funny. The same is true of the Florida haunted mansion rides. It's also supposed to be filled with people's ashes and that's probably why it's also said to be haunted by the ghost of a young boy. In fact, someone even claims to have caught him on camera. This photo was posted to a Disney World forum by a user named Street USA. About it they say, It appears as though a child is peeking his head out of the doom buggy and looking directly at me. Not only was he not there when I took the pic, but there wasn't a child of this age within 20 people in front of me in line. And as you can see, he's only a few doom buggies in front of me. Not only that, but why is he looking at me? There's no flash and no visible light coming from me. It's all infrared and invisible to the naked eye. Whether or not this picture is really a ghost or if there's a less sinister explanation, it certainly is creepy. It reminds me a lot of that photo of the ghost boy that was taken during the Amityville haunting. There's a number of videos purporting to show ghosts captured on Disney's CCTV cameras. This one from Disney World had people speculating whether the spirit of Walt Disney himself was wandering the park after hours. This one seems to show a worker from the Disneyland Tower of Terror with a few other passengers that he might not have spotted at the time. And this one shows a ghostly figure climbing aboard the Space Mountain ride at Disneyland. Captain Disillusion has done a pretty good debunk of the first CCTV footage. The most likely explanation is that as the cameras used to use cassette tapes to record onto, they would recycle the tapes by recording over the top of previous footage. As the tapes start to degrade, sometimes the image from a previous recording would show through. And as the cameras are static and always recording the same spots, if something is moving on the previous footage, it would show through on the new recording as a kind of ghostly image. This could also explain the other recordings as well. They use the same tape recording method and the effect looks very similar to that seen in the debunked video. The Space Mountain footage is intriguing though. This ride has a well-known ghost known as Mr. One Way. He is described as a ginger-haired man who sits next to people in empty seats and then vanishes into thin air just before the ride reaches the end. Even if this is just a tape recording glitch, it's a very interesting coincidence that the figure chooses the empty seat and then he moves perfectly in time with the coaster car. If it really is just one recording layered over another, wouldn't the timings be slightly out of sync with each other? Another ride with a famous ghost story is Disney World's Pirates of the Caribbean. The spirit is known only as George. The story goes that during the ride's construction, a piece of scaffolding fell on a worker named George and killed him. Nowadays, cast members have to say hello George every morning before the rides open and then say goodbye George every night when they close it. If they don't say this, then mysteriously things will always go wrong with the ride and it'll break down. There's no actual record of this George or of anyone being killed during the ride's construction, so it's most likely just another spooky tale. But there's so many staff members who worked on the ride who still swear that George is 100% real. The last story I want to look at is the It's a Small World ride. I know I've already covered the Paris version of this ride, but this ride also exists in the American parks and workers there have reported that sometimes after dark the figures will move around even after the power is switched off. Some even say that they've seen the characters blink or change facial expressions. Apparently this was a favourite ride of many cast members, so after they die they come back specifically to haunt it. Again this is likely just a tall tale, but it's scary to think of these strange figures coming to life after dark. 
There is one creepy photo floating around online related to this ride though. The story behind this one goes, in 1999 a family were riding It's a Small World in Disneyland when the ride suddenly stopped and passengers were quickly evacuated. As they were being led through a backstage area, they decided to use up the rest of their camera roll by taking some behind the scenes photographs. It wasn't until they got home and developed the film that they noticed this figure, dressed according to them in the same clothes as the cast members, hanging from the ceiling. The ride, they say, had actually been evacuated because somebody killed themselves. Disney covered up the event afterwards, and this is the only proof that it actually happened. The truth is probably a lot more pedestrian. There's no evidence that anyone took their own life on this ride. Even if there was a cover up, you'd think that some whistleblower would have come forward by now. Most likely this is just some sort of prop from the ride being hung up out of the way for storage. The arms don't hang down in the same way they would if it was someone who'd hung themselves. I don't think there's any way to prove what is actually being shown in this photo, so maybe it is. It's a long shot, but maybe it did happen, who knows. Okay, so this video has gone on for way longer than I expected. There was way too many stories that I wanted to cover and I could probably list a hundred more spooky Disney tales, but I've got to end it somewhere. Thanks to those whose video footage I used in this video. I'll put a link to the original videos in the description so you can go watch them for yourself. Go, go check out their channels too. I also want to say a huge thanks to those who supported me on Patreon and PayPal. These donations really make this sort of content possible. Uh, with the way YouTube is going, I think it'd be hard to keep going if it wasn't for support from viewers. So if you'd like to contribute and help keep the channel going, then check out the Patreon link at the end here. Should be something on screen saying support the channel. Anyway, thanks for watching. Until next time, goodbye.